Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am. The ride says it all. Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. And by Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Last year, we got invited by CF Moto to participate in a really unique event in Latouk, Quebec, called the 12 Hours of Latouk Endurance Race. Now, I had actually been to this race the very first year it started, 15 years ago. I was there for the inaugural event. And uh, last year, when CF Moto invited us down to participate, I was really excited to see how it had uh, evolved in 15 years. For that race, we participated in the six to 800 cc stock class. There was a number of editors from ATV Media from all over North America, uh, all racing brand new CF Moto Z Force 800 side by sides, um, and we did well. Everybody had a blast. We actually won the class that year, which which was really uh, surprising and it made me feel really good about myself. And this year, CF Moto decided to invite Dirt Tracks to come back and race again, um, but with a little twist. This year, we're really the only media that's been invited down. CF Moto invited us specifically to come and race. But this year, they provided me with a modified Z Force 800 to race the 6 to 850 cc mod class. CF Moto had done a bunch of modifications to this vehicle, and, and they call it their Stage 3 kit. The Stage 3 kit consists of a number of different elements. First, it has uh, a programmer. Um, to, I guess, remap the ignition and whatnot. It's got a full exhaust, headers and silencer all the way front to back. It's got Elka Stage 5 shocks, which you know are arguably the best shocks you can get in the industry, so that was pretty interesting. It's got a bunch of snorkel kits done for um, high flow air filters and stuff. And it's got a new aftermarket set of clutches from CV Tech. So the vehicle itself is really well equipped actually. And, and after doing a bit of testing on it before the race started, I was impressed with the power and especially the suspension with those Elkas. The format of the 12 hours of Latouk endurance race for side-by-sides is, uh, it's pretty interesting actually. The first day you've got a pre-qualifier, which is kind of a, almost just an exhibition event to determine who's going to start qualifying first. And they put some tires down on the on the front straightaway, and you had to run down the straightaway, zigzag around the tires, do a figure eight uh, around the, the final corner, and then hit a couple jumps and stop before you hit a line. And if you hit the line, you got a penalty. And then you've got the actual qualifying, which is basically 45 minutes of free free reign on the track to just go up and put down your absolute best lap. And then you've got one hour worth of actual racing later on the first day. And then the next day, the second day, you have one more full hour of racing with no practice or anything like that beforehand. So, you know, you're on the track in actual race mode for two full hours. We're gonna do another um, driver's meeting this year. And it's gonna be in French again, which means I'm not gonna have a clue what any of them are saying. But you got to be here, so we're here. But I'm not sure what I'm going to get into this. Question là-dessus, je l'expliquerai pas vraiment plus que ça. Donc les gars de side by side, faites-moi signe si vous avez de quoi. Je veux que ça soit clair en partant. So when we were at the the drivers' meeting before the first qualifier, I look over and who do I see but none other than Chuck Dempsey. And anybody who's a faithful dirt tracks watcher will remember that AJ did some some riding with Chuck Dempsey out in Moab. Chuck is a championship winning off road desert racer. This guy knows how to handle himself behind the wheel in the desert. I talked to him a little bit. He said he'd never done a race like this one before, sort of an endurance race on a course. And I was interested to see how he was gonna do. He was super interested to see what this race was all about. I figured if nothing else while I'm out on that track, if I can, if I can get ahead of Chuck Dempsey, I'm gonna feel like my life is complete. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. To start the first hour of the 12 Hours of the Tuke side-by-side endurance race, they basically line you up. It's kind of like a NASCAR start. So everybody lines up staggered um, and there's kind of a pace bike. You do one lap of the course, you stay in your staggered lineup. And then on the, on the start straightaway, the bike pulls off, the leader maintains 35 mile an hour speed. And when the green flag drops, everybody just takes off. The problem is that you take off into a 180 degree corner that's got barricades all the way around it. So there really isn't enough room for all these side-by-sides powering into this corner. 
And unfortunately for me, in the first turn, a guy a few bikes ahead of me decided to jam on his brakes and come to a stop in the middle of the corner, which meant the guys behind him piled into him, I piled into them, the guy behind me piled into me. You know, it was just like uh, an accordion of vehicles. And what I didn't know as it happened was that um, the impact into the vehicle in front of me actually damaged my radiator fan and uh, the switch that turns the rad fan on, the thermostat switch. I figured once I started moving again, the vehicle seemed to run fine. I couldn't smell anything bad, so I just kept driving. But after about seven laps, she started to overheat. There was coolant shooting out the hood and spraying in my face. And I just knew if I kept driving this thing, the heat was off the charts, I was gonna seize it. So unfortunately, after seven really, really successful fast laps, I had to bring it into the pits for the awesome mechanics at CF Moto to work on it which meant I wasn't on the track and I wasn't putting on laps. It took about 20 minutes. They had to repair the rad fan and hardwire it and they didn't know what was wrong at first. So after 20 minutes or so of being in the pits waiting around, I'd missed a substantial portion of the race. And when I went on that track again, the second time in, it was just, it was on. You know, this year the goal, you know, is uh, to win the 800 Open uh, lineup with the Z-Force 800. Why I invite, invite uh, dirt track? Because you have a, a skilled driver, you know, really good driver, and uh, your professional team report exactly what do you see here. That's the reason uh, I love to work with dirt track. I think I did great on the end of the race, but I just didn't have enough time to catch the guy in first. So we ended up second after the first hour, um, seven laps behind the leader, and that's a lot of ground to make up. Oh man, I don't know how long we spent in the pits, but it was probably a third of the race. So if it's even possible to make that back, I don't know, we'll have to see how many laps I'm down. Um, a lot of other guys in my class had problems, so I never wish bad on anybody else, but. That might help me in the end, but we'll see. All I know is that you can't drive CF Moto any faster than I drove that one. It's not possible. Twelve hours of the two endurance race is really just an all-encompassing off-road motorsports event. It is, it's really jam-packed full of stuff to watch and do and participate in. Not just side-by-side -side racing, but of course the, the reason this whole event was started in the very beginning was as a 12-hour endurance race on ATVs. So between us racing side-by-sides and in and around us racing side-by-sides, there's this 12-hour endurance race for guys on ATVs and they get you know, 50 entries into this class, mostly sport bikes, some four by fours like Renegades and Scramblers. They run uh, three different legs of this race. They run a four hour section the first day, they run a five hour section the first night, and then they run another three hour section the next day. The CF Moto team, the son of the CF Moto owner, uh, he was racing in the ATV class and watching him and his two co-pilots go through this 12 hours of torture, I just, I did not envy them at all. There was a time in my life I'd want to do that. That time is long past. Aside from the, the ATV endurance race, there's other things to watch. Like they've got pit bike races. They've got a whole trials course, which is really cool. They've got enduro motocross racing. And there's a great midway with all kinds of vendors and things to see there. You know, there's lots of food. It's just a great event to hang out at. After day one with the uh, incident on the start, you know, I was seven laps behind. There was a lot of ground to make up. And I figured second hour of the race, uh, from lap one till the end, I'm going as fast as I can go. That CF Moto had never been driven faster than it was being driven at that moment. Even through the dust and the crazy not being able to see, I kept on the gas and just hope for the best. And I was passing vehicles in the class ahead of me, the 1,000cc modified, putting moves on in corners, getting great straightaway speed. Basically, that pedal was to the floor the entire time. Had no engine issues from the day before. The vehicle itself was working fantastic. And I was feeling like, I was feeling like we, were, we were putting good laps down and making up good time, and we might have a chance to win this thing. Of course, as with all forms of racing, there are many things that we just simply cannot control. 
a nut fell off the outer steering tie rod end. It fell off, it didn't break off, it didn't strip, it just fell off and the tie rod end fell off when I was coming through a corner. And I thought we broke something, so I was pretty much ready to shut her down. Um, when I finally did climb out of the vehicle, I saw that it was really minor. I obviously didn't have an extra nut with me to fix it. You know, we were seven laps behind starting this section. I knew I was gonna have to drive it like I stole it and not even care about it. Unfortunately, that's what happens when you drive something that hard. I would have liked to have had a couple laps buffer just to drive a little easier, but I didn't. So this is the risk you take. And it was fun. I think we were flying. I think I was doing incredible. You know, it's not the vehicle's fault. It's just, just what had to happen. So it's all good. At the end of the day, I had a blast racing the 12 Hours of Latouk Endurance Race. I did last year, I do, did this year. Uh, big thanks to Carl, big thanks to the mechanics, the whole crew at CF Moto for making us feel like family and for putting on a great event, a great show, taking care of us while we were there, giving us great vehicles to race. And uh, I'm looking forward to next year. I'm looking forward to coming back, doing this again, doing it right, getting through the first term without an issue, and um, taking home some hardware at the end of it all. Dirt Tracks is brought to you by MBRP Performance Exhaust, lightweight performance. During a Dirt Track season, I like to have a big custom build to show you. And later on this year, we're gonna have precisely that with a brand new Polaris General 1000. But right now, I get a lot of questions from folks saying, hey, show us something a little more attainable, something we can do at home. And so that's precisely what I'm going to do with this brand new Polaris Razor 4 900. It might not be the biggest side-by-side -side out there, it might not be the baddest, but it's definitely hugely popular and exceptionally practical because you can take the whole family along with you. And when you have the family with you, the biggest complaint we hear is staying cool on those hot summer days, especially if you're in areas like Glamis or Moab or really any southern riding destination lacking tree cover. So keeping the sun off you and your kids can mean the difference between a happy family or, <laughs> well, not. The four passenger graphic sport roof is a great answer to keeping cool, both in temperature and looks. It features a stylized graphic on the top side while utilizing two transparent sunroofs to allow you better visibility. The roof is polycarbonate, durable, and extends over the roll bar area to allow better coverage in the sun and rain. This is pretty much a must have first upgrade. While we like to keep sun and dust to a minimum while riding, there's a fine line between keeping things cool and blocking out all wind movement altogether. That's why we prefer half windshields. They still allow a good amount of airflow, but also push the dust and dirt up and over the occupants. This particular windshield is lock and ride, so it goes on quick and easy, and can be removed entirely in just a few seconds if required. It fits tight to the bodywork with a rubber gasket and is made of a shatter resistant 0.177 inch polycarbonate. When you're installing a roof and a windshield, it's always a good idea to take a look at the rear passenger area because you can actually negatively pressurize the cabin of the vehicle, causing dust and debris intrusion from the rear. To keep this pressure from returning dust and debris to the rear seats, using a rear semi-vented mesh panel will still allow for airflow as well as some light, but cut down on the dust return. It also keeps the harsh direct sun from beating down on the rear passenger's back and necks. An easy Velcro attached system means that you can remove and store the rear panel if required in only seconds. And installation, well, that's quick and easy. And now that the interior of this Razor has been outfitted to keep you cool, you're gonna wanna make sure that those cup holders stay cool with nice ice cold drinks. There's a wide variety of manufacturer and aftermarket coolers, but the reason that I like this particular Pure Polaris cooler is because of its easy on and off lock and ride fitment. You can take cold drinks with you or leave the bed open in just a matter of seconds. It's that easy. It has really nice rubber straps on both lids, as well as an easy to use drain on the left side. It's also roto molded construction, so you know that it's gonna take all the abuse off-road riding delivers. Now, when you're out with your family, it's always important to capture those memories. And what better way to do that than with a built-in personal recording device that also doubles as a backup camera. The Total Vision camera is an all-in-one mirror and camera system that doesn't just work as a backup camera. It also has a forward-facing lens and will record on the front or rear camera and in even both at the same time. How cool is that? The included eight gigabyte SD card works seamlessly with your devices for sharing and the five inch color screen will play back in real time so you can watch the craziness that just happened right there in your ride. The rear camera can truly be mounted anywhere you'd like, but it's optimized for rear positioning to act as a backup camera. 
You can take still pictures with it as well, or 720 and 1080 video, and also use it at night with the built-in infrared. It's a very cool product that keeps you safer, but also helps you to remember all the fun times that you're going to have in your side-by-side. -side. And as if all of this weren't enough, you're going to have to tune into next week's episode where we have more easy to install, very cool parts to make this the ultimate family fun vehicle. Closed captioning of Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailer, built for adventure. I don't like it when manufacturers artificially apply a designation to a vehicle that doesn't fit it correctly. It not only creates unrealistic expectations for the vehicle, but it totally waters down the designation and confuses consumers across the board. Take the sport utility vehicle for example. This is a name that's been blurred in its definition. Who even knows what a sport utility vehicle is these days? Which is why it's so refreshing to see Polaris build a vehicle that's true to the sport utility name. There's not too many on the market. Polaris didn't have one, but now they do, and it's called the General. The General's chassis is based on the Razor architecture. It's not the same, but it's similar. Its front and rear suspensions are also based on Razor parts. They've just been beefed up on the General. 12 inches of front and 13 inches of rear suspension travel are numbers typically reserved for pure sport side-by-sides. Sure, put the General up against a Razor 1000 XP Turbo and it's not that impressive, but put it up against any mid-level pure sport and it has to make no excuses. That travel on our General 1000 EPS Deluxe is damped by a set of what we think are the most innovative and functional shocks in the industry, Fox Podium X 2.0 QS3s. Why are these shocks so innovative and functional? Because they're easy to use and simple to understand. They feature piggyback remote reservoirs, but instead of the typical 30 clicks of compression and rebound adjustability, they feature a simple three position clicker knob. Settings one, two, and three translate into soft, medium, and firm. It's simple, it's easy to understand, and most importantly, it works fantastic. Actual suspension action is excellent. Whether you're ripping trails, hitting big jumps, or cruising around the farm, the General is smooth and composed. It's plush, yet resists bottoming on even the biggest hits. If this was a pure sport side-by-side, -side, we would have no complaints about how it rides. Power-wise, the General is again awesome. 100 horsepower from its 999cc parallel twin comes on strong, and it's transferred through a set of excellent CVT clutches that are tuned perfectly to take full advantage of its 100 ponies. There's lots of torque down low when you need to pull or haul a massive load, but as the revs climb, the clutches bite down on the belt and keep pulling the vehicle darn close to 80 miles per hour on top end. In terms of general comfort, pun intended, the General is a bit of a compromise. And I say a bit because it's actually really great for all purposes. For sport riding, the seats are a little more upright than a Razor, but not so much so that aggressive riding becomes uncomfortable. And yet, they're far more laid back than in a Ranger. The standard equipment full doors make getting in and out of the General easy. So while the seating position is more sporty than the Ranger, it's no less convenient. Adjustable driver's seat, tilting steering wheel with a tilt and gauge package, high back, well bolstered bucket seats, it's all here. And it's all laid out in the highest quality, nicest looking interior we've ever seen from Polaris. The interior of the General literally looks like a car. All the same features you'd expect to find in a car are there, more so than any other side by side in the market. But more importantly, they all work exactly as you'd want them to, no matter what you're doing. Tons of storage, lots of legroom, nicely laid out switches, and a sexy new analog digital gauge combination, all excellent. Two 12 volt outlets are great when you need to power or charge something on the go. One thing we think Polaris dropped the ball on, and it might be the only thing, is the lid for the center console storage bin. It acts as both a lid for the storage bin and as an armrest, but it's not padded or even covered in any way. It's simply left as hard, smooth plastic, which isn't very comfortable and is easy to slide your elbow off of. It seems like a small point, but it's an important one. When it comes to utility, the true dual nature of the General really starts to show through though. Yes, its chassis is capable of aggressive sport riding, but it's also designed to haul and pull like a utility machine. With a dumping cargo box and functional single latch tailgate, its 1,100 pound payload and 1,500 pound towing capacities are nothing to scoff at. 
12 inches of ground clearance, dual sway bars, and dual rate springs that maintain over 60% of the vehicle's ground clearance when loaded, all ensure that when you're done playing hard, you can work just as hard. Our General is the EPS Deluxe model, which means it comes standard with power steering and a long list of cool goodies, like a roof, MTX Bluetooth stereo, 4,500 pound Polaris winch, front bumper, aluminum wheels with 27 inch GVC Dirt Commander tires, a Dirt Track's favorite. Essentially, all the things you might want to add to your General already included. What we like most about our General is simple. We've used our General to ride trails slow and fast, hit big jumps, haul wood, pull boats out of the lake, and it does all of this every bit as well as any pure sport or utility side-by-side -side would do on their own. The beauty of the General, though, is it really can do both. Dirt Tracks Television has been sponsored by Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. Can-Am, the ride says it all. And by Arctic Cat. Share our passion. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Dirt Tracks TV's YouTube channel so you never miss another update.